mosque vandalized in San Francisco. On November 12th, police responded to a report of vandalism at the Islamic Center of San Francisco, the oldest mosque in San Francisco and the first in the Bay Area. According to the report, members of the mosque were inside the building after Friday Juma prayers when they heard the sound of glass being shattered. The police observed that a window had been broken by a beer bottle that was thrown through the glass. Uh, Shabazz Sheikh, a religious scholar and one of the Islamic Center of San Francisco's board members, said that the community is distressed by the incident, saying, quote, we're scared, we're uncertain, and we didn't understand what was happening. London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco, tweeted her support for the local Muslim community. Quote, when any community in San Francisco is attacked, we must stand together, and I stand in solidarity with our Muslim community, she stated. Um, so I wanted to talk about this news because I can actually provide a little bit of local insight into this. Um, oh. So I thought this was, well, one, I wanted to cover this because uh, this is my area, so I, I know it well. And um, this is actually like fairly unusual for San Francisco. Something like this hasn't happened in a really long time, particularly to this mosque in this location. They said like this hasn't happened for like almost like over 30 years. Um, and when I first heard about this news and I didn't know which location it happened at, I was actually skeptical at first because um, frankly, <laughs> um, depending on what part of the city you're in, uh, someone throwing a bottle through your window might not actually uh, be anything that's targeted or anything that's unusual. Um, there are very few Islamic centers or mosques in the city. And um, the ones that I am most familiar with are actually downtown in kind of a rough neighborhood um, where uh, someone uh, just randomly destroying your property is not necessarily indicative of uh, a bigotry. <laughs> um, and, but however, when I realized what mosque this happened at, um, I, I I do actually think that this was a targeted attack. Um, this happened in uh, a neighborhood that I used to live in. Um, it's very quiet. It's a very residential neighborhood. It's south of the city. Um, there's like few cars driving around, very little foot traffic, just like homes, like highly residential neighborhood. And um, it's quiet. And so the idea of someone just like going around and bashing and breaking property is, uh, would be like fairly unusual in that area. It's not something that would typically happen. And, um, randomly the fact that they threw a beer bottle through it, like, I don't know, I, the way that the Muslim community that was being interviewed about it, talked about it, they did feel like that was very specific and targeted thing to vandalize their mosque with. Like they were talking about how the beer was actually, um, like pouring out all over their carpets and stuff when this happened. Um, and it's really unfortunate. Like the, there's a tiny Muslim community in San Francisco, very small. And, um, there's a larger presence in more of the East Bay area. Um, but that was more of a influence of more, um, like, African American Islamic organizations like Nation of Islam and kind of like these mutant Islamic organizations that off were offshoots and then later they became more actually Islamic. Um, yeah, but the fact that this happens very bizarre and very weird and very unusual. And I also wanted to talk about it because um, it is as much as we um, criticize Islam on this channel very openly and very frequently. I do actually think it is a responsibility for us to talk about when Muslims actually are targeted and when they are um, victims and targets of hate. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention, Suze. Oh, and yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. I actually found out about this from like a news agency completely outside of my area. And I was looking mm. into it. And I was like, oh, what the what the hell? Like I used to walk around here. Like I know exactly where this is. Um, I used to walk by this mosque like all the time. Um, go for a, in, go for a in, visit. Go inside. <laughs> I wonder if they would let me in. I I thought that non-Muslims can't go inside mosques. Okay, that's what I thought until I left Iran and I saw 
mosques inviting people in i'm like this is haram why are you letting non-muslims inside the mosque <laughs> so i think different people have different rules mm -hmm. but you know but now in this day and age you, you could find a mosque that does anything like i went to london i found an lgbtq friendly mosque so you don't know like yeah well, um, and you said that I that was one of the first mosques you've actually almost gotten kicked out of yes yes i've been to many <laughs> mosques and the only mosque that I ever almost got kicked out of, it was this leftist, woke, pro, um, LGBT friendly. Again, nothing like, I don't think like, by the way, I'm, 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 I'm pro LGBT. I'm hope, I'm hoping people don't get the wrong message from what I'm saying, but I almost got kicked out for asking questions. I've never been, I've never been kicked out of any mosque for asking questions, except this mosque that was supposed to be the most tolerant one, which is amazing. Amazing. Funny. Yeah. Yeah, we do have in in the Bay Area. We do have some like they they literally I, call them like radically inclusive mosques or like Islamic communities, but they're all in the yeah. East Bay. I'm pretty sure they would allow you in. I just wonder if they. I think the difference is whether they are the type of mosque that they would allow you in without wearing the hijab, or the type of mosque that they allow you in asking you to wear the hijab. Yeah, I'd be curious. Whenever I would walk by there, the people walking or like walking into the building and kind of participate interacting with the building like they did dress more traditionally that doesn't necessarily mean anything but i just like i noticed that yeah hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.